Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Um, he is regarded, according to some observers, as a, as a rather impressive operator. He is the chief of the defence staff and thus the most senior military officer in the land. He's the head of Britain's armed forces. And he spoke out against Jeremy Corbyn. I'm desperately trying not to indulge in any language that could be described as exaggerated or indeed uh, tabloidy. But I... I, I I've heard it described as misspeaking today. General Houghton is his name, General Sir Nicholas Houghton. And the Labour leader, if you're wondering why we're talking about this, has, has I think bared his teeth for practically the first time since he got the gig. The Labour leader has described General Sir Nicholas Houghton's remarks as a matter of serious concern for which he should be disciplined. For which he should be disciplined. So that is, I think, the first time I've seen his canines, isn't it? Jeremy Corbyn's canines. First time. I can't remember seeing them before. He's called it, and you've got to give the fella credit for picking a fight with someone who's, you know, not exactly what you'd call a patsy or a pushover, is he? You know, sort of picking a fight with some sort of nameless Romanian, the mark of a coward. Picking a fight with the chief of the British Defence Staff, arguably, could be construed as quite courageous. Um, he's not regarded as a man who would misspeak. A source has told newspapers that he would have been aware of what he did yesterday on the Andrew Marr programme. In, in fact, there's a quote in, in some papers. When he says something, he intends for it to have Im an impact. He does not make things up on the hoof. Gary's in Ilford. Gary, what would you like to say? Yeah, good morning. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of Jeremy Corbyn, nor do I have a really specific view on him, but uh, sure. when he made the statement that um, that he would never press a nuclear button. Yes. And uh, I kind of ask around, and, and, and this echoed with some of my friends who are not exactly Labour supporter, and they all agree that, yes, we, you know, we, we shouldn't have nuclear weapons. It's one thing that a lot of my friends and people I bump into seem to agree with. So isn't Corbyn maybe really smart and say, well, what really matters is not the establishment or decision makers, the people who are going to vote him uh, as, a, as a potential prime minister. Because I can't see, you know, I, I can see a significant... You know, not majority, but few people in this country feeling the same way about in, in having the cost of having nuclear weapons if you're never going to use it. I take the point that making a statement like that will never. Well, I'm got, that's where I'm going to nod you to now because we've had, we, we, we've had. I mean, I'm happy to have another one, but pro probably not today about about whether or not we need Trident itself. And and Jeremy Corbyn's insistence that we don't is, of course, endorsed by his. Uh, party at, at grassroots level and rejected by his parliamentary party. I'm interested more in, in, he said it now, it's great that you think it's good that he said it, but is the Chief of Defence not allowed to say, well it worries me then, I wouldn't really want someone to be Prime Minister if he's told our enemies that he's never going to, that he's never going to employ our most potent weapon. Well I, I, I find it odd that, uh, and I suppose he's quite right for someone from the army shit, that shouldn't this remark be made by perhaps a political member of the establishment rather than uh, a, a military member of uh, of the establishment. Well, hang on a minute. I, 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 I'm, I don't want to sound crass, but if if I'm talking about bunions, I want to see a chiropodist. If I'm talking about weapons, I probably want to talk to a soldier. Yeah, but it did surprise me because I, 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 it, um, Jeremy Corbyn is incredibly silent in, in, in the avalanche of sort of uh, put downs and, and criticism had So this did surprise me that he stood up. But quite frankly, I mean, I'm, I'm not a pacifist of any kind, but to me, so whose side are you on here? You're on Corbyn's side. Well, I, 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 as not being a Labour supporter, I'm sneaking towards that side. And should the general be disciplined? No, I, I think then that, that that surprised me that he should just kept shut. You know, he shouldn't say anything. I quietly. You just, are a diplomat. Are, are you are a diplomat. Are, are, you, are you are you the ambassador for Ilford? Are you representing Ilford on the world stage? Because you're not actually giving me anything here. You're, you're, I mean, I appreciate you've got a burgeoning and slightly surprising respect, respect stroke um, affection for Jeremy Corbyn, but you don't think the general should have said what he said, but you don't think he should be punished for saying it, and you don't have a massive problem with Jeremy Corbyn saying what he said, but you can see how it could be construed as dangerous in some quarters. Well, yes, uh, being a diplomat... No, too diplomatic. Marriage. You're too, well, no, diplomatic... Oh, you're right, diplomacy is the secret of a happy marriage, but I'm not sure it is necessarily the recipe for... Uh, for the kind of fireworks that I try to ignite of a morning. Um, I don't want to sound, uh, what's the word? 
patronising, probably, but I think some of you may have given this rather more thought than I have. <laughs> Houghton wasn't talking about weapons, says incorrigible FCA. He was talking about nuclear weapons policy, and that is a matter only for the elected. Hmm. Um, Corbyn bashing is getting very boring. I expected more from you, James. The military should not be political. This is a very scary road. I don't, I personally think it's political, Paul, but I'm open to persuasion. And I'm not Corbyn bashing, I'm just Corbyn sceptic. I'm a Corbyn agnostic. I'm as yet unpersuaded. That's all. I'm not putting the boot into it. I'm just wondering whether some of the people that are cheering him to the rafters have actually got the kind of foundations that they need for their enthusiasms. Elizabeth's in Birmingham. Elizabeth, what made you pick up the phone? Well, what made me pick up the phone was you asked for a definitive, and I'm definitely on the side of the Chief of Defence. And I think that Jeremy Corbyn is going to be here today and gone tomorrow at some point in the future. A politician who is going to be, who may have been elected as the Prime Minister of this great nation who would not defend the Falklands, who would not defend this country. I, I just want to steer you back to the conversation that, that we're having. Do, do you think the general, if, if, if he was, for example, anti-monarchist, do you think he would have been within his rights to reveal that on the BBC? Yes, I do. We either give these men... But that would, that, 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 that would make him a traitor. No. We give these great men power and authority, and he should have the right... And we don't, do we? Uh, uh, we, we? That's the point, I think, Elizabeth, that, that Corbyn's supporters are making, is that nobody... We didn't give the general any power or authority. Jeremy Corbyn's the only one in this piece who's been elected by the people. But the people elect the people Pardon? who give the power. So, in other words, the general has been given power through a democratic process. No. Get, no, 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 he that. hasn't. He hasn't been given power through a d democratic process. Jeremy Corbyn no. categorically has. But you're on no, the side you're on the side of the person who's been appointed by a politician. No, Jeremy Corbyn has been elected by members within his own party. Which is open Jeremy to everybody. Was not was not elected. Which is open to everybody, Elizabeth. I, I mean I, I don't think we can have an argument about whether or not no, Jeremy no, Corbyn has, back has been to your a, original question. Yes. My, the general my should be allowed to say whatever he wants without any form of discipline. No, or... that's not what we're saying. The general was in a conversation on television and he gave his views as he was asked. And we are talking about something which is the defence of this nation, of 64 odd million people. I but don't know if they're all odd, Elizabeth, but I guess we all speak as we find. No, I mean, I mean give or take 64 million. Oh, all right then, yes. Uh, Stan's in Swansea. Stan, what would you like to say? Oh, you've just opened so many cans of worms there, James. Yes, there's a few, um, isn't right, there? Right. <laughs> uh, okay, the, the, the position that I take is this. It's refreshing that an, a serving um, uh, general actually makes these comments because too far um, down, the, down the years have they just retired and then they make a, polit a political intervention. I think that they should actually change the oath of allegiance when mm. they attest, which says that if the country, if the, if the policy that's coming out endangers the country or the armed services, they should be allowed to, they must speak out. There's a little, there's a, t there's a touch of dewy-eyed sentimentalism about this, if you'll allow me to say so, for the very simple reason that just because you've risen to the top of the army doesn't mean you're a brilliant analyst of international relations or even actually defence matters. It just means you're a very good soldier. And we need very good soldiers to go to war, but we need, for example, who would you have wanted in charge during the Second World War? Winston Churchill or a general whose name you can't remember? Um, th there were several generals, actually. Monty was qu was quite good. Following but, orders, but, doing a very, very good job, but but effectively but, enacting elected politicians' policies. Let's go. Let's go back to 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 the kernel of, of, of the of the problem, which yeah. is which is that um, the policy of this country is to replace Trident, and 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 the lead-in time for that is. 15, 20 years, yeah. they're, you know, they're thinking about it. So for, for some um, uh, uh, idealist to say, well, you can forget that idea, actually, you know, <laughs> it, puts, it puts 
to uh, it, it puts the defence of the country so, in peril. So you are not you're not the first caller to effectively side with an unelected general speaking on a brief in which it would not be any exaggeration to say his interest could not be more vested. He should be free to say whatever he want, but the elected leader of Her Majesty's opposition should stay silent. And that is an astonishing. I know that isn't what you realised you were going to say when you rang in, but now I've repeated it back to you. You must be shaking your head in wonder at your own idiocy, Stan. No, no, not at all. Because so elected Plato politicians says, must Plato stay silent. Plato says that you don't, you don't take a, a wheel to, to uh, you know, an artist to mend. You take it to a wheelwright. So therefore, to get the best advice on defence matters, you go or you speak to a general. Or well, a yes, but 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 Publius, a... Publius Flavius Renatus in the fourth century famously <laughs> said, "Gitor qui desiderat pacem preparet bellum," didn't he, Stan? Well, so I'll take your Plato of, and I'll ra I'll raise you a Publius Flavius Renatus. One of us went to comprehensive school and the other one had a silver spoon and it wasn't me. The other one just read a tweet from Professor Hal Sosobowski at the University of Brighton, actually, and I'll translate it for you. Whoever wishes for peace, let him prepare for war. You are, however, I'm not letting you wriggle off the hook entirely, you can't deny that you've rung in to tell me the politicians elected should stay silent and the soldier should be free to say whatever he wants. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Abso absolutely not. You did. If, if Jeremy Corbyn says um, that he's not going to... Uh, do A, B, or C, then a general or a field marshal or a, an air commodore or an admiral has to say, um, "Look, old chap, what you what you're proposing is not correct." Precisely, he has to say, "Look, old chap," one on one in private, not "Look, nation," when the man he's talking to, the old chap that you refer to, isn't even there. There you go. You see, you've done it again. You've shot. You've shot. You've shot both feet off, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> to continue the military analogies. Oh, it's another John in Croydon. What would you like to say, John? <laughs> no, well, re really, a num number of matters, some of which have been covered, but I think your last uh, caller personified what I, I originally uh, raised when I rang in, which was the fact that, sadly, the British are constitutionally illiterate. Uh, it's yes. not their fault, um, but we don't have a tradition of being educated in the way the Constitution works, which is why we commit these great gaffes in terms of forget of confusing principle with policy and all this kind of yeah. thing, which is what we're really up against here. But there is another one. Another one which was referred to was, of course, the, the science aspect in the background of this. We've got a, we've got a system here which, for kind of post-imperial reasons, rather romanticizes the military at the expense of democracy. Yeah. And we, you, you, well, we heard that earlier with, with, I mean, lines like defending exactly. our nation, these brave men, and, and you know, yep. quite right, these men are brave, yep. but, but equally that doesn't make them politically astute. Yeah, and we shouldn't ever forget that one day during, it was a Labour government, a bunch of tanks rolled up at Heathrow without authorization, and they just parked there. And they did it, it was done effectively as a kind of signal that a large number of military were unhappy with having a Labour government, because invariably... I don't, I don't, I don't remember that. You'll, you'll be educating yeah, me now. Yeah, yeah. there was a, a squad, a small sort of uh, group of tanks pitched. Okay. And it was basically because there is serious disquiet amongst many of the military about what are frequently, although not always, Labour policies, which mm. end towards the, if not... Um, entirely abolitionist in terms of the, the deterrent, then generally they tend to be rather less bombastic than some elements of the sort of more right wing... Yes, uh, I, I mean, the, their supporters would say more peaceful and their enemies would say yeah. more naive. Indeed, indeed. But I think we have to see this intervention by the, by the general in another way as well. And I think it's part of a kind of below-the-line early shot in the debate now about a trident replacement. Mm, and, uh, and, and, and the broader question as well, which you refer to, of, of the relationship between government and, and army, which is why I, I wonder whether, because I said at the outset, it's the first time I've seen Corbyn's canines, and I, I wonder whether the reason why he bared his teeth on this is, is because of the comment that was made anonymously last month about the possibility of a yep, military absolutely. coup if he ended up being prime minister. He, he sort of feels perhaps Indeed, under attack. I, I, Yes, there, there, is, there is undoubtedly a, a considerable sort of swell of opinion that is highly anti-Labour, it's highly anti 
the, the abolition yeah. of a nuclear deterrent, or even, you know, we might re retain a bit of one, but it, the, the, the debate tends to be skewed in a, in a very binary kind of fashion. Well, and, and as is often the way with sort of binary and uh, sort of, if you will, unintelligent politics, you could take the cake, because I think their policy last time I checked was that we need a much, much bigger army, but we should never ever go to war, which kind of sums up the dewy-eyed sentimentality that masquerades for patriotism in the hearts of cowards and charlatans.